YouTube, I thought I'd explain the eleven satanic rules of the earth. Now, I'm not personally a Levian Satanist, I'm an independent agnostic Satanist, um, but these rules of the earth essentially are sound doctrine upon which one can base their life. Uh, it's a respectable system, it's a logical system, which is more than can be said for certainly the right-hand path religions, <clears throat> such as Christianity or Judaism, uh, with their antiquated illogical beliefs. Uh, you look at the Bible, of course, you know, obviously the way to tell if God is indeed the one talking to you is to put a piece of fleece out on your front porch and then ask God to make dew appear on it. Uh, but these are logical rules, rational rules, which make sense. They're modern rules. Uh, they're not antiquated, as is the case with most religions. So I thought I'd go through them and explain them a little bit. Uh, because while to someone like me they seem rather self-explanatory, um, or to anyone who's used to using logic, some people have difficulty. They think Satanism is literally about worshipping Satan, uh, which couldn't be further from the truth. They have no idea what Satanism actually is. They may not have even heard of the eleven. Uh, satanic commands, I mean rules of the earth. So let me go through them here and explain them a little. Number one, do not give opinions or advice unless you are asked. Again, fairly self-explanatory. If somebody wants to hear your advice, they will ask you a question. Going around giving other people advice, number one, it opens you up to problems because what if you give the wrong advice? Uh, whereas if someone is hopeless and they just need advice from someone and they ask you, it's on them. If they don't know what to do and you give them advice when it's asked of you, you're at no fault for giving them your own opinion. Whereas if you offer it up to them, they could make an irrational decision based on what you say, rather than a decision that they would make that might suit them as a person better. Satanism is about individuality. What works for one person doesn't necessarily work for another. Number two, do not tell your troubles to others unless you are sure they want to hear them. Don't bother other people with detailed explanations about everything that's gone wrong in your life. All the things that you find entertaining or important. Um, various things that have happened within your life. Again, if someone else wants to hear them, they'll ask. They'll say, oh, well, you know, what's up? That's basically the way that humans work. Number three, when in another's lair, show them respect or else do not go there. Don't open yourself up to problems with other people by invading upon their territory. Again, the aspect of Satanism being individuality. If a person is a Christian and they're in their church and you go in there and start annoying them, you're just starting problems for yourself. You're going to look like a complete jerk-off. Uh, whereas in a logical, structured debate setting, which someone else has entered into by their own free will, it's fine to debate about theology or philosophy or history or any other aspect of life. But if someone doesn't want to hear it, they have the right not to hear it. That's one of the basic fundamentals of Satanism, is self-motivation, self-will. Uh, it's not about pushing yourself upon others. You have every right to voice your opinion. For instance, I voice my opinion all the time on YouTube. Nobody has to go to my videos. Nobody has me telling them, oh, you, you have no choice. You have to listen to what I say on this video. They can click on it or they cannot click on it. So putting your ideas out there for people to see voluntarily if they wish to see them is not the same as me going into a Christian's home and trying to boss them around and tell them what to do. Obviously, that's not okay. Number four, if a guest in your lair annoys you, treat them cruelly and without mercy. This would be in the form of metaphor. This doesn't mean beat people up if they annoy you. That's, that's not what it means. It's symbolic. What it means, if somebody is annoying you, you have every right to completely blast them with your intellect which is primarily what Satanism is about. It's not as, as much a physical religion, even though it's carnal. It's not so much a physical religion of, oh, let's get some guns and kill people who don't believe the way we believe. Satanism is very intellectual. It's about thinking for yourself. It's about doing what you will. And 
if somebody else is attacking you verbally, you have every right to retaliate. Number five, do not make sexual advances unless you are given the mating signal. Again, if someone else doesn't is obviously unreceptive and doesn't want to be part of your sexual games, don't involve them. That's probably the most self-explanatory rule here. Um, again, a, a reasonable, logical person will understand when they're being given that mating signal, so to speak, um, the signal that, yes, I'm interested. Otherwise, you shouldn't be making advances. Or if you make some sort of advance and they rebuff you, leave it alone. Number six, do not take that which does not belong to you unless it is a burden to the other person and they cry out to be relieved. This would be sort of a Robin Hood aspect, you could say. Um, you shouldn't steal from people. Certainly, if I go into someone's house and they're already poor and I take their TV or something, that's just greed on my part. That's not acceptable. Uh, but if, for instance, somebody has a hoard of food and someone else is starving, take a loaf of bread, there's nothing wrong with that. If another person has a great deal and someone else has very little, it's the law of the earth that he with little will do what is necessary to survive. Again, going back to logic and reason, um, you could extend that to any number of so-called crimes of larceny, uh, and you could apply it to those situations. Number seven, acknowledge the power of magic if you have employed it successfully to obtain your desires. If you deny the power of magic after having called upon it with success, you will lose all you have obtained. If you're performing some sort of symbolism or ritual of some sort, and it is working, and understand that the workings of satanic magic are not the same as certainly uh, Wiccan magic or something that, that pertains to a deity. Satanic magic would be more psychological and symbolic. If you're achieving what you wish through your own ritualism, and if you're a logical, rational person, person, your ritualism will be tied to reasonable, logical expectations. It will be tied to the way in which you operate. Satanic magic being more about altering your own behavior or persona to fit in with a specific need within your life. It has nothing to do with, oh, I give this sacrifice of yak's blood to Satan, and then Satan gives me a million dollars or something. If you think that's what satanic magic is about, you're totally wrong. You shouldn't even be a Satanist. You shouldn't pursue magic uh, because you're just going to bring destruction down upon yourself. Number one, you'll probably go fucking crazy. Uh, number two, it's probably not going to work the way you want it to, and then you'll get frustrated. It's about taking a logical, rational explanation and applying it to your situation and using symbolism and ritual within your own psychological, your psyche, uh, affecting your own behavior and outlook to coincide with what you want. Again, Nicholas Schreck talks about a black magician being primarily a person who affects the world around them through the change in their own mind. If you can change your own mind, you can set it up to go for your goals on a physical level, not just or a mental level, not just a symbolic level, and align yourself using that ritualism. It's not about, you know, I wave a magic wand and I get what I want. That's not logical, it's not satanic, that would be more in line with what one of the more ancient right-hand path religions would teach. Number eight, do not complain about anything to which you need not subject yourself. If you start doing something, and you start complaining because it's not working out the way I thought it would, big deal. It's your own fault. You've done something wrong. Uh, perhaps you're just not up to the task. Perhaps you've got some weakness in yourself. Um, again, if you don't have to do it, and you choose to do it, you have nobody to blame but yourself for the outcome. It could go well. It could go badly. Uh, again, this would tie in again with the magic. You can alter your own persona, but that's no guarantee that things are going to work out the way you think they will. Uh, it's not hit and miss, but at the same time, it's not 100% certain, yeah, I wave my magic wand so it'll happen. That's not the way Satanism works. You have to use logic and rational thinking in order to be a Satanist. It's very difficult to do that sometimes. Uh, complaining about something which you don't actually have to do 
is pointless anyway. If you're going to complain about it, don't do it. Number nine, do not harm little children. Self-explanatory. You're not supposed to harm kids. And this is this and the next command are the reasons why all of the right-wing Christian notions of Satanism cannot be correct. A true Satanist could not ab ritualistically abuse children or animals. They couldn't sacrifice children or animals. Um, it wouldn't be an acceptable part of the Levian path, or even independent Satanists. I'm an independent Satanist. I don't necessarily agree with all four, all parts of Levian Satanism. But these commands may, would make sense to anybody. Uh, you're not supposed to harm children. And that could extend to psychological harm as well. When somebody raises a child, and they're a fundamentalist, whether it be Christian, Jew, Muslim, whatever, they're psychologically harming that child. That child is literally being brainwashed. Satanists don't tend to do that. That's why within a, a satanic circle of people, if they have children, those children might go on to be, become Christians. Because they're not being brainwashed into any specific way of thought. They're not being brainwashed into saying, yes, well, my God is true and all the other gods are false, and etc., etc. Um, that doesn't happen within Satanism. It's individuality. As a Satanist myself, if I had children, I would say, do what you want. Not, not to the point of self-destruction. A parent has to exercise some control. But I'm not going to tell you my reality and expect you to follow it to the letter. I expect you to rebel as all children will, and I'll respect your decisions when you're old enough to make your own decisions. That's up to you. Number ten, do not kill non-human animals unless you are attacked or for your food. Again, self-explanatory, and again denies the Christian claims that Satanists go around killing animals all the time. Uh, the correct term for the people that do that would be nuts. Um, Satanists don't do that. There are plenty of Satanists who are vegetarians. They would never think of killing an animal. Now, personally, I would say I would extend this rule to, for instance, trapping an animal if it's digging around in your garden, as I have to do with my garden. Uh, if it's interfering with yourself, you have every right to destroy the animal. That's just my own personal independent opinion. That doesn't hold with this uh, specific aspect of Levian Satanism. But again, self-explanatory. Don't fuck with the animals. People who go out and they go trophy hunting and they shoot an animal and they mount it above their mantelpiece and they say, oh, well, I shot this animal here and what a wonderful sport this is. What's the point? Uh, there's no point to it. Are they eating the animal? Well, maybe they are, but probably not. They're just having it stuffed and mounted to look at. Uh, the animal looked a lot better before it got shot in the head. They're just destroying a piece of nature for their own egotistical benefit. Uh, there's no point to it. Number 11, when walking in open territory, bother no one. If someone bothers you, ask them to stop. If they don't stop, destroy them. Again, metaphorically speaking, to destroy them. Perform a ritual against them, if that's your will. Tell them to stop. If they're continuously annoying you, you have every right to retaliate. Um, and this would extend to giving equal punishment to the infraction at hand. Obviously, if someone's annoying you with stupid jokes, you wouldn't haul off and hit them in the head with a baseball bat. That wouldn't be logical. If you apply logical, rational thought to all of these commands, they make a lot more sense in the metaphoric perspective in which they were written. If you take them literally and you say, well, I can destroy anybody who's annoying me, that's not logical. You have to apply your own logic, and reasonable people have this ability, to the situations in which you encounter in order to apply these. Otherwise, by being unwise, by being illogical, you will destroy yourself. Because in, to live in a logical, ordered world, you have to use logical, ordered thinking. Um, many people don't do that. And I would, I would personally condemn most Christians and say they have no order or logic whatsoever uh, because of the bizarre things in which they believe in and the bizarre ways in which they act towards their family, towards people who don't believe as they do, I would say that they're disordered within themselves and indeed they end up destroying themselves. I knew, I knew a fundamentalist family a while back that went to the church that I used to go to. 
Uh, I think at least three of their children now are atheists, and they were fundamentalists. They're raising a generation of atheists by their own fault, by their own stupid behavior. They're actually creating an enemy within their children. They're actually creating what they're against. They're forming the foundation of an atheist mindset by being so insistent upon their own righteousness because of the rebellious nature of children. And that would apply to other situations as well in which fundamentalists operate. If you're in the neut a neutral zone, if you're just walking down the street and someone starts harassing you, you have every right to symbolically or mentally destroy them. Obviously, again, though, you've got to apply logic to the situation, otherwise you end up in jail. Um, so that's just a simple explanation of these 11 satanic rules. They make sense if you look at them with a logical mind. They're not going to make sense to everyone because some people will look at this literally and they'll say that, well, this just excuses me to do whatever I want. That would be a rather simplistic and perverse definition of Satanism. To say, oh, Satanism is basically about doing whatever you want isn't true. It's about using logic. And if you're using logic and you're, you have a rational ordered mind and mindset, you are capable of doing whatever you want, because what you want will be rational and logical. Satanism isn't so much about worshipping the devil, doing as thou wilt, as it is doing what is logical and right for you at the time, understanding rewards and consequences, understanding the psychology of basic human behavior is a good start. Any, anyone who wants to become a Satanist should do two things. They should learn about psychology, and they should learn about anthropology. It really helps them to build the foundations upon which to build a satanic mindset. Because on the one hand, you'll understand the meaning of the actual ritualism within Satanism. If you choose to go that path, you don't have to have ritualism at all. Some Satanists don't perform any ritualism, and they're just Satanists in their own mind. Understanding psychology lets them understand the logical aspect of human behavior, that is behind Satanism. And it's beneficial to everybody to have at least a basic working knowledge of those functions. Otherwise, rules like this can be taken out of context and they can cause people to behave strangely and it's not going to have the intended effect. So, that's just a simple explanation of the 11 Satanic Rules of the Earth. Hopefully that clears a few things up.